Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video. First of all, let me say a big thank you to all of you who are asking about my health. I'm fit now, I recovered and I'm full with energy here doing videos. And I remind you also that I opened the members section of the channel that you can join. You can click the button under the video there that will help support my work. So as you already know, I've done a lot of videos about Arch Linux on my channel, but I haven't explored that much the Debian world. But today this is going to change. I'm going to show you Bunsen Linux based on Debian 10. It uses the Openbox window manager, the Tint2 panel and Conkey. Without too much talking here in the intro, let's jump into the video. So this is the website for Bunsen Labs Linux. So as you can see, the latest release was August 2nd, 2020 and the version is Lithium. So for those of you who don't know, Bunsen Labs is actually a community continuation of CrunchBank Linux and it's derived by Debian 10. So it's a Debian 10 based distribution. Now you can read through the website here. There are many informations that you might be interested in. I'm not going to go through it because I want to go to the installer directly. As I already said in the intro, this is based on Debian 10 and it uses Openbox as a window manager, the Tint2 panel, Conkey, and also JG menu as a desktop menu. So let me switch over to my virtual machine here, which is on the fourth desktop. And if you can see, I put it up already in my virtual machine and I have a choice here whether to start the live system or to start the installer. So I'm going to start the installer directly because we are going to explore the system once it's installed. So let's do that by going down to the start installer menu and hit enter. And this is basically going to use the Debian installer, as you can see here. So I'm going to select my language here and click continue. The region where I am in right now, it's actually not America, it's actually Europe. And I'm going to choose the country where I'm now. The locales US is fine, so I'm going to click continue. And for the keyboard layout, I'm going to choose my Swiss German keyboard here and click continue. Now it's going to take a moment here to detect the hardware and the components. And if you have been through already the Debian installer, you might be familiar already with this process. It's going to take a moment to do that. So here we can choose the host name. I'm going to leave the default and I don't need to have a domain name here and the network is now configured. So we can configure now the user. So I'm just going to put in here my full name and click continue and the user account is fine. I'm going to select a password and retype it in here and click continue to continue the installation. It's going to take a moment to do this. So for the disk here, you can see what we have here. We have the choice to use the entire disk. We can also set up an LVM or an encrypted LVM, or we can do manual partitioning. Now I'm going to go with entire disk. This is the only disk I have. So I click continue. And here is where we can choose how we want to partition it. So with this installer, it's actually nice. You have also the option to create a home partition if you choose to do so. So by default, it says all files in one partition. This is recommended for new users. But if you want to have a home partition or even a home var and TMP partition separated, you can choose the other selection. So I'm going to go here for the home partition and click continue. And we can finalize the changes now on the disk by clicking continue. And now we can proceed by hitting yes and click continue. So now it's going to partition the disk and it's going to install the system. So this is going to take maybe one, two minutes, depending of course, also on your machine. And I'll be back with you once it's done. So I went ahead and finished the installation and the machine now rebooted. So there are a couple of things I need to adjust here once we are in the system, but let's go ahead and start now. The new installation here is going to take a moment to boot up and it's using the light DM display manager. You can see here now it's not displaying full screen, but I'm going to change this in a second. So let me log in very quickly. And so this is the welcome screen here, but as you can see, the display is not displaying correctly. It's not picking up the resolution. So let me open up the menu here quickly, go to applications settings, and then I'm going to pick up a render and I'm going to select the resolution temporarily for this display. There you go. So it's easier for you to see as well. It's going to be easier on your eyes. Now I will reboot the machine afterwards for these changes to take effect, but I want to go through this small setup menu. So you can see here, this is an optional post installation script designed to help you configure your new Linux installation and get the most out of Bunsen Labs. So you will need presented with a series of options. So the first one is, do you want to do this or not? So I'm going to do it because I just want to show it what it does. 
And the first thing I need to enter here my sudo password, I need to authenticate. And the first one was an internet connection check, which was successful. Now, a warning here, why FOSS is primary about freedom of choice, certain choices are known to carry an increased risk of breaking things in Bunsen Labs. So two of the riskier things are adding Ubuntu PPAs or unknown untrusted repos to your sources list and installing a package that wants a newer version of libc6. So you have to keep in mind these two things if you're working with this distribution. So for me, I wanna type in here, I understand. And we are now on the next step, which is updating software and sources. So apt, update and upgrade. Okay, when I wanna do this, I want to update my system. So I'm just gonna type in the default, which is the enter key to accept the yes option and continue. So this is going to install the latest packages available from the Debian repository from this distribution. Now, while it's installing, let me open up a new terminal here with the mod key, which is the Windows key, if you have a Windows keyboard or the command key, if you have a Mac keyboard, mod T to open up a new terminal here. And let me increase the font size so that you can see also easier. And let's type in uname dash R. So of course this is based on Debian 10. So it's using the 419 kernel, which is quite an old kernel. So this installation might not work on the newest hardware. So if you want to try this out, probably it's the best idea to try it out first in a virtual machine. But if you have old hardware, this distro will probably run without any issue. And as you can see also here, the memory usage, it's not that huge. Now we have also apps running in the background, but once I'm going to reboot the machine, we're going to explore a little bit more in depth what this distribution has to offer. So let me close here the window and go back to the setup menu. And there you go. So checking your system for possible improvements and install Bunsen image archives. So you can see here, this distribution comes with a set of background images, but the wallpaper and other background images that were released with previous versions with these distributions are also available. And if you want to install them, you can choose to do so here. I'm going to say no to this. I don't need to do that step anyway. So here it's asking also whether we want to install the Debian backports. Now, the problem with Debian backports, as it says here, because they are packages taken from the next Debian released, which is testing, they are adjusted and recompiled for usage on Debian stable. The problem with this is that they cannot be really tested as extensively as Debian stable. So it's really up to you to decide if you want to use them or not. I'm going to say no here. And also the same thing for the Bunsen Labs backport. So I'm not going to choose this. I'm going to just accept the default. And now it's asking you if you want to have Bluetooth support or not. I'm going to say no because this is a virtual machine, but if you're installing on Metal, definitely do that. Now it's asking if you want to install Java. I don't need Java here on this system, so I'm going to select no. And Dropbox as well, I don't need this. So I'm just going to select no. Of course, you can change this if you want to and also development packages. Now, if you choose yes here, it's gonna ask you several questions about several packages that you might or might not want to install. So I don't need to have this, so I'm just gonna select no. And now the welcome screen is done. So we can just hit any key to exit. So let me actually open up a terminal because I want to adjust the screen resolution and also the grab bootloader. Now, if you are encountering the same problem, you can follow along, of course. So the first thing I want to change the light DM display manager. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash light DM and then light DM dot conf. And I'm going to enter my sudo password here. I'm going to scroll down here to the seat section of the file because there is one option I want to change, which is the display setup script. So I need to uncomment this line and select X render dash dash output the name of the display is virtual one in my case you can find out the name of your display by typing x under in the terminal dash dash mode 1920 per 1080 and this is one so i'm just gonna save this file and exit the editor with Control o and Control x and the next one is gonna be the grab bootloader so sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub and I'm going to go down here and select the GFX mode. I'm going to uncomment this line and replace the resolution with the, the resolution of my display, which is 1920 per 1080. And now we can save the file again and exit the editor. And we can update grub, sudo update dash grub and hit enter. And this is now done. So I can reboot now my machine 
and everything should be properly configured. Now, this is again something that I have to do on my virtual machine, but if you're installing on Metal, chances are things will work out of the box. So you can see now Gravity is playing correctly, and you can see also here we have several options. We have advanced options. We have also the possibility to launch into the TTY if you choose to do so directly from here. And also we have the system setup and high contrast text. So I'm just gonna go again to the first option here, and now the Light DM Display Manager should display correctly. As you can see, so I can just go ahead here and type in my password. So this is the desktop of Bundle Labs. We have an open box window manager here with the tint to panel. And you can see also we have Conkey here. This is one of the many widgets that we can have here on the desktop. So I did already a video on Openbox on the channel, and if you want more in-depth information, technically, especially how to build Openbox also on Arch, for example, you can go ahead and watch those videos. But this is a very nice setup. I think it's really nicely done. We have the Tint2 panel down here with a few icons for our internet connection, the volume. We have here also our clipboard, our power options, our calendar time, and also our power menu, which displays here in the middle of the screen. So you can see the UI has a fairly elegant design and everything is really under the eyes. You can see also we have here our Conkey widget with the memory usage right now. It's 400 megabytes of memory. And we have also here some of the shortcuts available in Bunsen Labs. So, so the super key is the Windows key if you have a Windows keyboard and the command key if you have a Mac keyboard. And you can see so you can just press super key here to open up the open box menu. Now the open box menu here contains basically your menu for your system. So you have here a few shortcuts for your terminal, the web browser, the file manager, which is, by the way, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is Thunar. There you go. This is the file manager for XFCE. And we have also the text editor, which is a genie. We have the media player, and then we have our applications. So by default, Bunsen Labs comes with a few applications already installed. You can see here we have quite a good collection of applications also for the Bunsen Labs distribution itself. And we have also our compositor here. We have also LibreOffice, which we're going to see afterwards under the Office category there. We can also configure, of course, our LightDM Display Manager here. We have Nitrogen for changing our wallpaper. And we have our terminals and the screenshot utility. Now for development, we have already some tools here like Genie, we saw that before. On the graphics, we have also here the document viewer and the Ristretto image viewer. And multimedia, we have already VLC and the Pulse Audio Volume Control already installed as well. We have as a default Firefox ESR here installed, the long support version. And we have also FileZilla and Transmission. For Office, we have the Document Viewer and we have also LibreOffice, which comes already pre-installed here. And then we have our system settings. So here is basically where we can change the look and feel also of our system and also to configure things like the network. You can see also here for installing packages, we can always use the terminal and the app package manager from Debian. Or if you want, you can use also the Synaptic package manager, which is the graphical package manager here for Bunsen Labs. So I need to authenticate here. And this is the Synaptic Package Manager. So we can choose, for example, OBS. And we have here OBS Studio. We could install it also directly from here. So what else do we have here? We have our system settings. So these are tools for administering our system. And we have also here Gparted and the LX Terminal and many other utilities as well. Now, the BL utilities are for taking screenshots. As you can see here, we have also the possibility to install an OpenSSH server, which is not installed by default. We can also edit the SSH configuration if you want to do that directly from here. And then we have also our themes manager. So right now, this is what I have here by default installed when I install the distribution, but you can choose also other themes. Now, in the end, we have also here help and resources. If you want to have more information about Conkey, for example, there is a Conkey Wiki link and so on for other utilities. We have also the key bindings. You can see some of them here, but you have a more full menu down here where you can see all of the key bindings available. We can also lock the screen directly from here, or we can use also Super L in this case. And it's going to basically go back to the display manager, as you can see here. And we can also, of course, exit. This is going to go back again to the display manager. Now, for example, if you want to change this or if you want to add more widgets here to the desktop, you can press the super key and go to preferences and then go to Conkey. So here we have several options, but what I want to show you here is the Conkey manager, which is going to display basically what kind of widgets you can display on the desktop. So right now we have the default one, which is displaying here on the side, but we have the choice also to activate other widgets here from this menu. So for example, I want to have the clock on my desktop. I can click this and click apply, 
and it's going to show the clock here on the side and the other widget here on the right side. We have also some other things here. For example, we can display, for example, this ellipsis time blue. If we click this and click apply, it's going to appear here in the middle. And you can see we have here, let me close this window. We have basically the date and a clock. So fairly cool. Now, of course, you can change also the wallpapers if you want to do that and so on. So this is a very quick overview of the desktop. So we have a very clean open box installed here, which to me looks actually fairly elegant. And let's open up now the terminal here. Let me also increase the font size. So that's it's easier to see for you as well. And again, as I showed you before, this is actually using the 4.19 kernel. So this distribution might not work on the newest hardware, but if you have an older machine, this will work just fine. Now, let me type in again LSBLK here. So we have here the four partitions that we have when we install the system. We have a 512 megabytes EFI partition because it's a UFI machine. We have a root partition here. We have our swap partition, which is about one gigabyte. And we have our home partition, which take the biggest part of the disk. So of course you can always update this by typing in sudo apt update in the terminal. Or you can use also the package manager that I showed you before. Because this is Debian based, it's going to work exactly the same. And you will have the same packages as well. So if I type in sudo apt install, I'm going to install OBS Studio because I'm using this all the time. So you can see we can just install it there. And it's going to take a moment to install. And then it will be added automatically to the menu. And if I close this and if I pull up the menu and just search for it, I just need to type immediately here. You can see OBS appears on the top. I can start it up. And now I have OBS here up and running. So of course you can expect with this distribution not to have the latest packages because it's using older repositories which contain older packages. But if you're looking for a distribution with stability and an older kernel for that, and you like a window manager like Openbox, I think this is definitely a great choice. You have a very elegant desktop. You have stability from the Debian kernel. You have the repositories from Debian as well. And if you're used to work on a window manager, you can give this a go as well. Now, you have also the possibility, of course, to customize the Tint2 panel. There is also an option here in the preferences. For example, you go to Tint2 here and you go to Tint2 Manager. You can choose another flavor of the Tint2 panel. So, for example, I can choose this Lithium Light Vertical. If you want to have the panel vertical here and click Apply, you will see you will have your panel here on the side. Or if you prefer, you can also choose a lighter theme by clicking Apply here. And you see you have here different colors and so on. You can explore yourself here how you want to customize this desktop. But it's fairly simple. And you can also edit the files that come already pre-installed. If you choose again the super key, go to preferences here and go to Tint2. You can also go to the Tint2 editor here. Select one of these files, like for example, let's say this one and click OK. And here you will see you can customize the Tint panel to your liking. So it's very customizable. And this is my personal taste, but I really like how they put it together. A nice theme for the open box window manager, a light distribution, which does not take too much resources and also the stability of Debian. So this was Banzen Linux based on Debian 10. Again, I have to say I really like this distribution so far. It has a very nice theme. Openbox really stands out. It doesn't use much resources, not even 500 megabytes of RAM. And it's very stable using the 419 kernel, which is stable, yes, but might not be compatible with the newest hardware. However, if you have an older machine, chances are you will be able to run it just fine. And I will try to install it also on my older laptop here. I have an older laptop that I think will run with this distribution and I will report back my findings then. If you try this out, let me know also in the comments below because I'm curious to know also your opinion about it. And I remind you again that you can join now the channel by becoming a member if you click the join button under the video there. That way you will support my work. You can also become a Patreon to support my work or you can also donate to the channel through my website as well. Thank you very much for watching the video guys. I always appreciate it and I'll see you very soon in the next one.